Pretty interesting stuff throughout the history, Yuta upon especially that star AD carry player, loves to get creative, but we'll see what happens here. We are into the draft here, Ints over on the blue side, Detonation focus move from Japan over on the red, and Sivir the first ban there from the Brazilians, and Nautilus the first ban from the Japanese. And honestly, the likes of Yuta upon going for his off-meta builds, we saw his Callista, which is the Blade of the Rune King, into the QSS, already kind of a curious start, given that we usually see the Bloodthirster, Hurricane Rush, and other scenes. But then, of course, the late Randuins was an interesting adaptation. And in general, the off meta against these top teams, the stuff that catches them off guard, is one of the easiest way to kind of set up a situation where maybe you do have a realistic shot at beating this Ents lineup. Yeah, new new band here as well, away from Astorore. Hacker in the band there as well, away from Yang. Been a very popular and winning pick all throughout the day so far. We want to see what the last band is from Ents. What do they want to take away? Is it an AD carry again? They've already picked on Siva, and they're going to go with Zed instantly, banning away a mid lane champion from Seros. Yeah, I believe in the Japanese team, we do see a lot of Instalock first pick Zed or blind pick Zed. So it's understandable take away one of the most reliable assassins. Ints, it looks like that they respect here to um, the Japanese team. The Ints potential of picking up Kalista, despite the fact that they play a very strong Kalista themselves. So taken away from the champion pool, a lot of interesting first picks available. The likes of Sejuani, who actually escaped picks and bans in the last series. Maybe on 5.7, finally starting to lose that first pick, first ban priority. Yeah, and only one jungle ban as well, so Revolta has his pick of the options here if he wants it. Gragas, yeah, he's been super popular all day. That would make sense as a first pick. I like the Kalista takeaway as well, even though it is a big champion for Detonation. Focus me, just because Kalista is still quite strong. It's, it's funny, we almost... I feel like pronounced the death of Callista too early with the tank meta coming through, but apparently Callista just always going to be good because she Cal keeps coming into the meta. Callista and LeBlanc, I mean, best friends forever. They're the champions that kind of go against the grain and the tank meta. You think both these champions might start to fall apart, but just like how LeBlanc can overtake a lane, then overtake the game, Callista, that two item spike has to be respected. We speculated on it. Grag is the strongest available jungler going to be the first pick. It's locked in, and I think that's the comfortable choice, and again, shows nothing about your comp, and fits into the disengaged meta that we kind of find ourselves in. Yeah, just such a great first pick. Gragas, so versatile and good, with little resources as well. Kind of reminds me of almost super-powered Nunu, or Nunu and Lee Sin fused together in some ways, so a good first pick there. They did take their time on it, though, and looks like Detonation Focus Me might be doing the same, but going to highlight a few champions here. We'll see what they want to take away for themselves. Have the Morgana highlighted at the moment. Already seen a top Lane Morgana, so the flex pick Morgana action's definitely been in action. We've seen a lot of Urgots threatened, but no Urgot picks. Actually, has avoided picks and bans. And next to Sejuani, a surprising omission from the picks and bans so far. But we'll just wait to see what they do choose to lock in. They could always go for a support, all the supports available, barring Nautilus, you'd have to say. Like five seconds to go. What will be the start of this team fight comp? If we do see Morgana and Urgot locked in, that's already a massive amount of pick pressure, especially in the mid game. And that's exactly their picks there. They hover them, they think about them for a while, and eventually do decide to settle on the Morgana Urgot that they highlighted. So, I mean, again, so much pick pressure. Flex pick comes through from Morgana. Honestly, Urgot a flex pick. We've seen mid Urgot, we've seen bottom lane Urgot, both of them. So, very flexible two picks. It doesn't necessarily pigeonhole themselves into double AD, but it is a possibility for the comp. Yeah, we'll see here as well as Revolts are going to flash Draven here to the crowd, which will be an interesting choice for Macau. I believe we've seen his Callista today was the champion that he played away, but we'll have to see what they want to switch over to. Again, very strong side here, Aryans. I like the first pick, Gragas. I think that's a great first pick on this patch in particular. Can't really go wrong with the Gragas, but 15 more seconds and we'll see what they want to take away. Exactly. We're just waiting to see what semblance of champion pick. I don't see the reason to pick a Draven. Azia makes a lot of sense. Is locked in. One of Toka's favorite champions in the mid lane. Uh, he actually in this. He actually played this Azia versus Urgot matchup in the finals of the CBLOL Summer Split. I was happy to pick up even Athene's Unholy Girl into the Urgot, knowing he could navigate lane, respect the ranges from the Urgot, and then just have the mana regen for late game fight. So not locked into actually seeing this mid lane Urgot, but the possibility does not threaten Toppers. No, and Thresher's here are very strong picks there with, again, lots of just general versatility. Got engaged, got disengaged, got pick potential. These first three picks are very strong here for Ince, but we pop over to the other side. I also like that Aziz a takeaway from Seros, who looked formidable on the champion in the laning phase in particular already in the game earlier today. And I like a bit of flair here as well from the Japanese. Got the older Clarity Clairvoyance representing. You just can't show those summoner spells. I can understand that. In Meta's past, it made a lot of sense to hide, but 
not so much a relevant factor anymore. Setting it back a long, long way. Sejuani Malka, we're talking about Tank Central coming out from the detonation lineup. Suddenly, no squishies to speak of whatsoever. Yeah, and there's Sejuani and the Malka picked in, and you're right. This is often the case with Urgot lineups here on 5.6 and now 5.7. When everyone wants to be tanky, you add Urgot in there as well, and all of a sudden, it's just five tanks suddenly who you're facing against. But man, Talk about a team that really has buzzkill when the Emperor's Divide comes out. They're going to find it really hard to fight around that particular corner. You feel like the disengage for this supremely short-range lineup is going to be premium. And you have to think it's at this point, they need to get the damage out there. Which AD carry will they look to? It looks like it's probably going to be in the 2v2. They're flashing the Tristan. This is actually our favorite of, of Mikau, who actually played a really impressive Tristana in the finals of the CB LOL. But. Yeah, he looked great, honestly, and it was his kind of pick into Callista, I believe, at the time. Tristana has received some quality of life changes or additional buffs on 5.7, so wouldn't be that surprising to see if they want to take it away. They'll consider their last few picks here, and they do pick, they do take them away here. Tristana, Sion are their final picks for the draft. So we've moved on to patch 5.7, so the latest round of Tristana buffs have come through. Basically, the buffs, to simplify for the audience, are all centered around explosive shot and rapid fire. If a target has explosive shot riding on it, um, patch 5.5, the big change was the auto attacks to targets marked by that explosive shot decreased the cooldown of rapid fire. But on 5.7, they kind of double dipped in this situation and made it so the auto attacks with rapid fire decreased the cooldown of explosive charge. So those two, those two abilities are scaling with each other. I mean, in simple terms, when you mark a target, you're really priced to go all in on the target that you mark. It makes you a bit more predictable. You're not going to change... Uh, focus as much, but it means more lane burst, it means in the late game, more rapid fire. So it's just become more relevant, but but single target rather than just spreading that rapid fire to multiple tanky members. Yeah, pretty fiercely single target, but very a lot of strength there, shown. And we haven't seen Tristana in quite a while since those changes, so nice to see you here. We'll see what Ints can get done with it, but the last pick here for Japan's detonation focus me is the Vladimir. I mean, it just makes sense. Add another tank to the lineup, but a consistent damage tank that can beef up the base values that are already high from the likes of Sejuani. Maokai and, and Morgana are also going to be very respectable when it comes to damage, but damage is a team effort for this detonation lineup. No massive damage sources, and you feel like the Empress Divide could really be the trump card if they can separate fights and specifically keep Macau on that Tristana, the hyper carry in the late game alive. I mean, Tristana, she still has decent range as well as an AD carry, don't forget. I mean, how many times have we talked about Azir plus a hyper carry here, and it's hard to say exactly where new Trist fits in as far as uh, like late game carry potential goes, but you have to think it's pretty high on the list. I mean, look, around Worlds time, she was definitely right up there with the best. Probably was the most reliable with the jump reset hyper carry in the game. With the changes, she's certainly not the late game hyper carry the likes of maybe Jinx or Cogmore. She's probably on, in the second string, but her laning's, in fact, stronger than it was before in some ways. More reliable. The explosive shot does a lot of damage, especially if you get in there with the the rocket jump, which you can do so aggressively in a 2v2 situation. And in general, her turret taking is actually even better than it used to be. A little bit more risky and not smashing it down from the 800 plus range that you were once before. But you can use that explosive shot on the turret and really DPS it down fast. So she has flexible options. In general, in terms of the laning phase against Urgot, still going to be a painful lane. But the burst trades, honestly, might actually go with Tristana, if she can avoid those awkward early trades, the same damage trades with the range advantage, going to go to Urgot, but all in trades, I actually think Tristana has a realistic shot. And that'd be super interesting to see that 2v2 land play out, so I wonder if that's what we'll get here. I mean, they did pick it away, probably figured that Urgot was going to go to the AD carry position, so you have to think in some ways might have been a counter pick. You know, they already flashed the Vladimir previously. It did feel like it was going to be a 2v2 Urgot. There is always the potential they're going to look for a lane top, because any Urgot lane, honestly, is very <laughs> painful to navigate. The level one will be fascinating, but I'm really interested to see as we load into a pause, unfortunately. Yep, not quite interesting yet, unfortunately, as we do have a quick pause to start this game off your fingers crossed, but I agree. I think the 2v2 is highly interesting between these two teams here, especially in that bottom side of the map, so I wonder where we'll go next. In general, I love the draft from Ince, Azir, Gragas. I mean, they just seem to have so many good tools for 5.7. And look, one of the best champions at punishing melee champions is the Azir. Fits the comp because you can peel for the hyper carry. But in general, you're going to have to get in Sand Soldier range when you're any of these champions, honestly, on the side of 
uh, detonation. You've got such short range in general from these members. They're all going to be taking Sand Soldier damage. You feel like if the Azir in particular gets big, it unsettles a lot of the team fight advantages that detonation are looking to cause. In terms of laning phase, Batum is actually a pretty decent matchup against the Azir. It's one of the matchups that really come through as Azir shot up to prominence with the buffs on Fatch 5.6, returning him to some of his former glory. Doesn't necessarily explode turrets like he used to, but in a lot of other ways, it's still the reliable disengage but high damage team fight control mage. I said a lot of words there, but all of them relevant to yep. Azir. Well and, and they're going to try and pitch. The Tristan is the big question mark, though, Page Down. That's why I'm so interested to see the eventual 2v2, whether it's from the start of the game, whether it's with a few levels, a few items in. Can Tristana actually opt into damage trades with an Urgot? Because that's information that I feel could influence other scenes and other tiers of play. Absolutely. And the thing about Urgot, I guess, is that as far as early power goes, he does have a trough, weirdly enough, in the very early levels, but we are onto the rift now. Finally, the pause has finished in our last game of the day here. It's from Brazil versus Detonation Focus Me from Japan. And again, both teams coming from a loss, wanting to pick up their first win. Yeah, only two, one appearance apiece on the rift. So both these teams trying to launch their fortunes for day two with an end of day victory. Multiple members and CC has piled into this brush. Ast Astero has to be really careful. Yes, and one. He does not want to face check a whole team here, but they will invade as five will ints now. Going to try and get some vision down as well. Going to, again, look for some of those trinkets going down. We'll see how deep they place the vision. Trinket goes down. They will take it out. So good reflexes there, identifying the one, being able to clear it, and just some vision around the area. Going to get very good... Uh, view of the red buff and the Krog area. And interestingly, that even though multiple members went into the red side jungle of Ints from Detonation Focus Me, no deep vision coming through, only the very shallow vision at the, uh, the gank brush towards the outer turret of the, uh, uh, the outer turret of Ints. So they don't have any real information or scouting. You have to think Ints, with all their vision being committed to this red side, is looking for vertical jungling. And with the likes of Thresh and Tristana in the top lane, seems to be confirmed. They don't necessarily have to start at the enemy red buff, but you feel like Grog is going to naturally path up there. It seems like we won't get the answer maybe then about what does that 2v2 lane look like unless we already have movement actually from Detonation. Focus me wanting to come into the top side. They'll actually be 2v2 at level 1. Flay back there as well. Yudapongo a little too low, but good damage there from the asset hunter. Kiting back wonderfully is for to flash away, but now Kazu may be caught out of position as well. Again, still level one, and Doxter might back away. Has to be careful. He's going to get low. Asadota comes in, does tag him, but not quite enough for the kill, and it's very close as Scion dies, but it'll be fine. It's just taking a camp. So much crazy 2v2 action before the minion lines even break. Urgot, level one. You mentioned it just at the tail end of that champs, like does struggle at level one when he can't really control ways where he's really prone to being pushed in. And it was just the burst damage coming through from the explosive shot at level one. Fully charged, there's the flash. Oh my God, Gragas up here as well. Revolta wants to try and make something happen, but gank goes amiss, flashes are burnt, and very early level two pressure comes through. Gragas, I think, took one small camp and then ganked. Somehow the framing of that actually made it even more intense as Gragas flew into the shot. Flashed in, cancelled the auto, didn't have enough damage. I feel like Udapon was actually healthier than we might have expected after using both the a couple of potions. Of course, went for the long sword, so didn't necessarily have the high level one base health, but probably had more regen than uh, Ince expected. Yeah, looking fine right now, and I'm pretty sure Greg has ganked without having a single buff, so hyper-aggressive level two gank there from Gragas, and you can see teams want to try and keep this star AD carry down, because there's a reason he was named the MVP for this season of the LGL. I mean, he's a playmaker, and from level two, we already saw that. Looks like they're going to make the late invade to the enemy red, but going to be completely taken by the Scuttle Crab until he does. Yeah, in the mid lane now as well, Ceres versus Tokas is good trade. They're coming through for Ceres, who again has shown very strong prowess in lane in particular in a lot of these matchups. And right now on Vlad, bullying his ear actually is kind of out of mana. Exactly. He's committed too much of his mana already, so he's just looking to push the wave in and look for a chance to back. That's the big thing that Azir was looking for there. No need to go opt into any trades. He's oh. in the top lane. First blood does come through for Trist. They were able to finally get the kill on Urgot, who was looking a little low there finally succumbs to Tristana. I mean, the 2v2, it seems to work. It seems like the Tristana, specifically with all the changes, you can see two points in explosive shot, one point in rocket jump, so nothing's changed in terms of skill order. But the burst damage coming through, remember, you do 20% more damage if you explode the um, explosive shot with the rocket jump. So the, the damage can be just surprising. And with heal down, with no potions, 
that's the result. Let's see it again here as well. Kazu has to be careful. Macau might fancy himself diving in, but does not commit right now. And that was through some honor. Early, early summoners burnt meant that that first blood was able to be lined up quite easily there. And impressive stuff from the Tristana early on. And a really awkward first buy is just the Sapphire Crystal. So no combats. That's not even building towards that Mana Moon in terms of sacking up the tier. Just offering nothing in the trades apart from a little bit of extra mana sustain. You feel like the, with Explosive Shot being the max both for pushing and for harassment reasons, as in the bot lane. Yeah, Bond's in trouble. Gonna get dove here. Yang actually tanking up the turret and Revolta. Level 3 is gonna dive in. Yang will fall to the turret there. So Sion gets credit for the kill. And Revolta might go down as well. Just got health from Happy Hour. So oh, close to being a misfire coming through. Ints need to take this game a little bit more calmly as they went for the o huge overextension on the turret dive. Lucky that... Uh, the Maokai didn't have Twisted Advance available to drop aggro or just get any sort of CC onto either of the members because there was a potential double kill lined up there. Yeah, almost took it away there, did Bonds in, but we'll just be happy with the trade now instead as we look in the mid lane. Lots of double items coming through. Double Doran's actually for Tokas and double Ampto moving into Hextech Revolver for Seros. So this game, it's already pretty aggressive. Three kills in almost six minutes as Tokas forced to flush away a good bit of pressure from Sejuani. He just tried to use the mobility in his kit and actually interrupted that with with the Sejuani being in melee range as he looked to hop over, so forced to use the flash. Suddenly, this laning phase gets that much more tricky. Against Sejuani, we often see these Azir's and the control mages in general opting for the summon spell cleanse, but it's only the heal. Suddenly, looking like a pretty tasty target for Asta Raw on the Sejuani. Yeah, he's level five now as well, been jungling quite nicely, just farming up a storm. Basically, you can see just that in the CS difference between the junglers so far. So. Going to be six fairly soon. We'll maybe look to mid lane for that gank, just like you mentioned. And Seros getting ahead in this lane. 10 CS up already on the Vladimir. I mean, the big concern that Tristana went back, didn't even need to buy a potion, just went straight for the BF sword. You worry for Urgot. We, we, we predicted, we forecast just with what we know about the kits that Tristana might start to win these all-in trades. And honestly... They're looking pretty tasty for Mikau, and the lane's pushing against Utapon. Yeah, it's just going from bad to worse, unfortunately, for the detonation. Focus me dual lane here, but Mikau going to keep clearing away. Going to exploit your shot the way there just to AoE it down a little bit more. And again, strong CS so far from the Trist. And that early Snowball BF Sword, if she can keep going here, this little Buccaneer, the Snowball can get out of control on the top side. And Utapon should actually tab over to the item, see no sustain, and look for some harassment because that damage will be sticking. No sustain coming through from the Thresh. But it looks like he doesn't want to open himself up to a death sentence. Already respecting the burst potential for Mikha because of the item disadvantage. Has only built up mana with his subsequent purchases after the level one. So trade stats definitely not working as advantage. Mm -hmm. Morgana actually going to eat a hook there and a teleport will get cancelled there by Mal Malka, who might have suspected a dive there. So very defensive and Ints will back away as a result. But unfortunately now for Malka, no teleport if they do it again. Yeah, I mean, Revolta was actually spotted by a ward. So it probably wasn't the worst channel of the teleport, but punished just from the lack of engage coming through. A wasted cooldown, but... Doesn't look like it's going to be punished just yet. No, and as we look through here, 1,000 gold almost up now. The ins built up. There's the Gragas. Yeah, good binding coming through. Gragas now moving in as well. The Black Shield that's good enough, but Macau diving in aggressively. Actually takes the turret in. Ku moves in there as well, but now uh, Silent so going to dive in towards the turret. Yuta Pongo in trouble. Now Revolta flashes forward, finally gets the kill. Joxta tanking turret aggro, but he'll get out as well. And it's all out aggression from the Brazilians, and they've gotten three kills already. I was going to say, it feels like we're learning about the aggression of the Brazilian scene. Then they really disregard those turret shots. Multiple people fall into them. One turret shot of death. Vladimir actually goes to towards top trying to become involvement in any of the kills. Binding hits. Good binding there. Lantern available. Revolta can't quite make it. No. Does get there in the end and able to get to safety. It goes for the Dark Passage ride. So Ghost is down for no particular advantage. The lane is pushed into the Vladimir is punished in more ways than one. And it's only really a bit of CS and some minion waves being pushed in for Maokai, which are now going to be hoovered up by the Tristana. Yeah, Trist happily taking away the waves. And you mentioned aggression. We're almost literally doubling down here for Macau because that BF soul was not enough. Boots one and now double Doran's Blade on top of it as well. And the only reason to opt into Doran's is for more fighting. You're going for early game stats rather than building into, say, a, a long sword for late game items like the like the Last Whisper, like the Bloodthirster, all items that this channel eventually will opt into. Instead goes the ultimate aggressive early game item build. Even against a Maokai who's just going for sustain, going to be building up 
the uh, the catalyst before too long. This is looking for early kills and early snowball. And that's again so aggressive from the Tristana. So we'll see if the early purchases pay off with those Dorans. Yang now in the top side of the map as well on the side, looking fine on CS. But Maokai doing well as well here in Urgot. I mean, maybe happy, honestly, to get out of the Tristana lane. I mean, to some degree, but opting into a Scion who always has so much ranged wave clear, has the sights on there's a swap. Yeah, they are going to swap him back in. Yang now going to get aggressed on. Sidwani was waiting in the brush. No ultimate needed, and Yuta Pongo picks up the kill. It's actually very smart positioning from uh, Detonation. They all stood on top of, them, of the model, ensuring there was no safe passage for the Scion who would have instantly just collapsed into one of the members of Detonation Focus Me into trying to answer this with a dragon. Not the world's fastest dragon, but with the minion damage cap increased on the Drunken Rage, I believe, during patch 5.5 or 5.6, going to eventually come down through the Gragas. Yeah, pretty safe as well for Gragas, who's quite tanky there with the Drunken Rage active. And first dragon does indeed go over to Ince. They pick up that advantage. Looks like it's going to be a swap for the enemy blue buff, which, you know, Vladimir or Sejuani picking up the blue buff. Vladimir in particular picking up not really a big advantage of Sejuani, maybe just picking up for a bit of power clearing, but not really a big thing to consider. And Mikhail, with the BF Sword, I guess one thing we mentioned, not going to have a lot of kill pressure onto Maokai, especially without the Death Sense landing, but throw on that bomb onto the turret, and suddenly the explosive shot's going to do just power down this turret. Not thrown on there quite yet, but you can see Tristana working on that bottom turret quite hard here. It's almost down as uh, Tristana looks to continue her aggression, now swapping back to the bottom side. Back here in the mid lane, Serra still looking good. 10 CS ahead there on the flag with his Fiendish Codex and a Hextech Revolver completed, but Tok is sitting just fine there with his double Doran's Charles, not really wanting anything other than to farm up with the Vladimir. Exactly, just happy to build towards the Athenes. I already mentioned, would build this in the Urgot matchup, just very core to the kit with the 30% mana restore that came through in recent patches. Actually forces out the Teleport. Does Yang hard pushing this top lane on the Scion? trying to force the, the rotation back is a bit curious to me. I mean, rushing into a lane where you already were struggling against the Tristana after Dragon's gone down, there's no objective to fight down bottom. But I guess maybe it was just a timing situation as the trades, the tank battles go on. Yeah, I mean, Scion, decent damage in trades, good uh, skills that are AoE down the wave, but Revolt are going to clear out some of the creeps as well. Dragon not quite back yet. The first one was taken a few minutes ago, so not able to look for that one either. Right now, just a lot of farming, but Tristana, you have to think, winning that war. Pickaxe now completed as well at 101, starting to get towards what could be quite a quick Infinity Edge. Absolutely, and it already has all the peel from the likes of Gragas Azir. The kit's really suiting the Tristana, so the Tristana snowballing just makes you very happy for an Ince fan. Uh, coming back, actually, for a moment to the Maokai, it's worth considering one change we didn't mention on 5.7 is that Sap Magic passive has been hit, so staying a little bit lower in lane. But once you have a Catalyst, the Doran Ring, and you start scaling up in levels, not really a relevant statistic to talk about. No, it looks like Righteous Glory going to be the build here for Bonds and giving for the Crystal Embraces in the inventory there as well. Cinder Hulk's completed for both junglers now as well to fit into their Trailblazers. So then a Chapman completed there as well. A Brutalizer now for Urgot going to make things a little bit better, but unfortunately just horribly behind in CS as well. That's almost 50 up for the Trist. Yep. Yeah. 41 CS already. Now the turret's taken down as well. First turret of the game to go along with the first dragon they'd already claimed. And, and Detonation also have these scattered scalings where obviously Vitamin and Sejuani mostly opting into the late game to stack up health, so ability power and health respectively. Urgot erring towards the early game, happy with the Hemo Plague, but definitely has a, load of, a lower item ceiling, will start building tanky at a point. And, and the Urgot in particular, their early game champion, is the one that's furthest behind, which is perhaps unsettles a lot of what this team comp does together. Yeah, you have to think so. There is the blue buff get stolen away as well. Revolta able to take that one away. Yang with the frozen heart done now as well. Getting quite tanky quite quickly on the Scion, you have to think. And Athene's not quite done here for Tokas. Still farming away. Vlad, same story actually as neither mid lane has been back for a while. And Seros again, very strong early landing phase. He's pretty far ahead already. And uh, you can see this mid lane is about 1,600, 1,800 gold apiece to go and spend. And I've been impressed once again by Cerus's laning. And you can see this Vladimir comp differs greatly from the one we saw in the previous game coming through from the Chiefs. They've got a very proactive CCing jungler in Sejuani. You've got CC from basically every other member of the team. We talked about how Nunu Vladimir, no pick potential. Basically everyone other than Vladimir has a massive pick potential. The Urgot being behind, though, that's the big question mark is can Urgot 
still be relevant despite not even having a mana moon completed. Just the Brutalizer and a tier 14 minutes into the game. Well, we'll have to see here as the Midlanders do finally go back and spend some money on new items. Athenes is picked up now for Tokers. Kindle Gem and the Will of the Ancients finished there for Vlad, plus an extra Ruby Crystal. So going to be going for Spirit Wizard second, it looks like. And that's a very defensive pickup. In this case, does he? I, I feel like with the Urgot being behind, you don't really have the luxury of opting into the Spirit Visage just because your own damage is going to go down. And you're already doing well in trades against the Azir, so it doesn't seem necessary. Turret dive, though. Yeah, actually, Bonson could be in trouble. Revolta and Yang here in the top side. Good CC chain. Great ultimate there by the Gragas. And Malchai, even with the ult ticking, very tanky. Not dead, though. And Yang, that's one turret. It's too many. No, it's not. Those turrets do so much damage, but not quite enough as Morgana's run. Oh, that Black Shield was sick. Tokas does flash out of the way, though, but dodges the Emperor's Divide. Astorora here in the mid as well, but Azir just escapes near death. That was a really impressive Black Shield, I guess. Not that hard an ability to, to self-cast, but really on point. Saras is ghosted. Rediving, though. Macau's, though, come in as well. Hook there just missing from Jockster. And Look at Trist, though. Already has the Infinity Edge. They had to just get away from the potential crit that would actually take his life to go along with the explosive charge damage. And if you got that, yep, you've used the thing. Yeah, they are going to go in. Bowler throwing out, though. Does hit for the slow there onto Trist. Tokers going to get Hemo plagued over. He'll back away. Bust the shot used there as Jockster gets caught out. Boxes and is forced to flash away. And detonation focus me still up against that turret, but Ince, again, just almost reckless aggression at this point. Exactly, that was a 3v5 coming through. Sion eventually teleports onto the turret. Gragas still hasn't got there. Their siege is definitely pretty good. The wave clear, not one of them, detonation focus me. But you have to respect all the engage options. Yeah, wave clear coming through means they have to reset the wave and push back again. And dragon back in 15 seconds means this is a good area for Ince to be hanging around. And that Tristana at this stage of the game is just impossible to fight, you have to think. I mean, it's China, exactly. She's the one that, if she just gets free reign, whether it's on a single target or on a turret, you're going to explode them very, very quickly. Lucky crit means that even the tanky members, like the likes of the of the Maokai, have to respect the Tristana damage, and it will only get worse as this game goes on, and she starts to scale up in terms of items. Vladimir returning to the mid lane. The other thing is that with Spirit Visage, it's usually in a situation where maybe you got, you're against a Morella Nomicon coming through, which was a very... Uh, possible option coming through from Tokas on the Azir has gone for the Athenes for comp just for the selfish mana regen. It means they don't have that healing reduction that he could have easily itemized into. Yeah, Mikael, they're going to clear out the Scuttle Crab here. We see Detonation Focus Me trying to get position on the Dragon as they clear out a ward in the side as well. But Mikael actually may be caught out of position, does juke the binding, so. Good move there, but the Scudder Crab down goes to Detonation Focus Me, but Yang going to dive in. Saros looks to be the target. Macau pops an explosive shot on, but Astaroi now going to get turned around. And Revolta looking good there. Saros jumps in massively, but gets hooked by Jockster. Revolta forced to flash away, though, and Tokas trying to fight, but he's so low on health around the side, and no one dead yet. Miraculously here as they'll keep fighting in, but good cues there coming out from the Urgot. Yang now has to run as well. Tokas too low, going to poke from the side, and again, nobody dead, but Detonation Focus Me might have forced them out. But actually, we saw Astaroth flash ultimate and miss. It went completely sideways. The slow, now only the 30%. If you don't hit that Glacial Prison square on, doesn't really affect the fight. So that's the flash and the ultimate down. Still, no one's healthy enough to actually start this dragon. You feel like Dead Nation focused me. That would have been a one team fight if they had the better item timings, but just not enough damage coming out from the lineup. And pretty much everyone races back to shop except Revolta, who takes his red and now runs back. And everyone's going to make a beeline straight for the dragon, it looks like here as well. Big minion wave in top lane, though, been prepped by Dead Nation Focus Me. And if they can buy some time and get the objective, they might get a tower as well. So Cyan looks like he's pressured. It's going to top. Doesn't have teleport either. So this should be the moment science shows a free dragon coming through for Dead Nation Focus yeah, Me. They're going to take away the blue buff as well. You have to think it's going to go over to the Yogurt, the star 80 carry player for the team, and it does indeed. No dragon going to get taken out right now, though. Yang, though, in the top lane, they might reconsider. Turret goes down, and Seros going to get aggressed on, but Jockster going to get too low here, but now Azir going to come through. Good damage there with the auto attack. Revolta now going to come. He does get the knockup. Massive cask in there as well. Flayed back into the team, and Macau claims it. He reflects on top of him, though. The heal comes through, and he lives. Yeah, the heal comes through. Remember, they've traded objectives despite the fact that Sion was hopelessly split towards the top of the map without a teleport. Dead Nation could have just gone straight onto the dragon. They would have traded it for the 
out a turret, but would have been an unanswered dragon, but it looks like they're going to lose both. Yeah, we'll have to see now as the dragon is going to get looked at by Ince, and again, kind of trapped behind their tier 2 in mid means that Ince will have position, but don't want to pull the trigger, have a couple wards in the pit, so have vision of it, but not content to really aggressively pick up the second dragon, which is against how they've been playing for the last 20 minutes, I have to say. Yeah, it's a very strange move, but... Again, I keep shaking my head at this Spirit Visage. The no damage potential from Dead Nation Focus Me, despite all the excellent CC and the Hemo Plague likely to hit onto five members with all their initiation options in the Glacial Prison. You just have so much potential of the damage not being there. You usually only see a single target take damage from the Urgot in particular. Auto attacks not really respected on that champion. You need this Vlad to do damage. Maybe you go for the Rylas for a bit more early utility or the Abyssal Scepter to big up the damage from the likes of Sejuani and Maokai. But very curious for me to see, see him go such a defensive build in this particular situation where there's not even that much magic damage and he's already been able to navigate the Azir with the spell vamp for him to really get through. Yeah, interesting as well. But Ents do get the dragon as a result of uh, some early, some regrouping there and some good control around the area. Now looking to rotate down towards the bottom side of the map and take away some towers for themselves. And we've definitely slowed things down a little bit after the massive amount of kills in the first 10 minutes or so. But Detonation Focus Me right now is a good pull from Vlad, protects him from the hook. Asteroid going to dive in there, but the turret, actually that's a sun turret, never mind. Asteroid though, taking too much damage. The Hemo Plague's good though. Ultimate almost completed for Morgana as Jockster is forced to flash away. Yang as well has to be careful. The hook lands in on top bonds of it. Yang trapped in the enemy team now. Probably going to go down here. Trying to fight there as Macau gets grabbed as well. The Buster Truck comes through but he will die to Morgana. Yang now dead as well. Will get the trade kill actually with his passive but it's a two for one win for Detonation Focus. And me. we saw this same situation in Bangkok. Titans versus Besiktas. If you have such a strong front line and your escape on your AD carry is gated around a first kill. If the first kill never comes, you never get that jump reset. You can't open up the mobility to get navigated these fights the Tristana falls down so it's a good team fight for detonation focus me they just need to pick up the minion waves and start fighting when the objective is actually there to be fought for remember those were team fight wins or, or just an even team fight after the objective had already gone down for it yeah Jockster going back now as well. Going to do a bit of shopping. Everyone regrouping actually as Bonson just reaped a ton of gold in the top side of the map with again some good side wave control there from Ince. They seem to be adept at pushing out these side waves in particular. It's been a hallmark of their play so far in the tournament from the few games we've seen. But again, the gold lead pretty slim here. A couple thousand up here for Ince coming through and more items are on the way here. But right now, Detonation Focus Me holding on well. I think the Dragon Deficit might be the biggest thing to look for here in the next few minutes. Yeah, I mean, this is a team comp coming from Dead Nation Focus Me with the likes of the Urgot in the Marksman role to actually expect them to opt into early Dragon Control with all their CC, with the Hemopoe being super relevant when you've got set up CC from every other member of the team, but instead finding themselves in a Dragon Hole, finding themselves a situation which Stan are still able to cultivate what is now only a 25 CS lead, but it's any, any AD carry in a CS lead against an Urgot is already doing better than expected. Yeah, and still looking good for Triss. Level 11 now, so building up now. Does have the rank 2 ultimate. We kind of look through the rest of the items. Need to see Large Rod to join the Stinger and the Athens there for Tokas. And a Warmog's almost completed there for a Volta. So I think a carry choice in some ways here. Obviously very selfish, looking for pure health. And not the traditional carry item we think of, but certainly one that means Revolta can just dive more and make more plays. I think you're in a game like this. Warmox makes so much sense when you're not really against any big steroids like attack speed and critical strike. The demand the likes of Randall's. I think going for flat health deals with the two sustained damage options of the Acid Hunters and the Vladimir Harass. So... In most situations against a true AD carry, I wouldn't really be a big fan of the early war mobs, but it's cost effective, really interacts well with the Cinder Hulk, which is basically a death cap for health at this point. And again, you'll have it very soon. And when you're rotating around the map as much as Gragas has been in this game, that passive that comes through when you're out of combat is very relevant to keep yourself topped up on health. Yeah, helps with happy hour there as well as Yang. Applying a little bit of pressure here in the top side of the map up against Bonzin, but 20 CS ahead on the side, looking good. Building some more tank items there as well. And just a matter of what else can they get. The turret actually going to go down in the bottom there. So it's rotating nicely now, starting to pick up the pace of the game. But even though there's only a 4,800 gold lead coming close, 5,024 minutes, look at this mini map in terms of pink wards. Huge pink ward line around the dragon pit and the enemy blue. 
The amount of safe places Dead Nation Focus Me can go on this map is literally just the turret, the creeps hitting their inner turrets. They don't really feel any control on either side of their jungle. Even the Raptors seem like a bridge too far. With their mid-game power spikes and the Vladimir for a bit of late-game insurance, both those factors seem to be irrelevant as the C this CS holes they're in are only going to get larger. Yeah, and they're just growing their lead here again. It's a fairly slow snowball, but once it starts rolling out of control, very hard to stop. So almost 5k up now for Ints with the Dragon coming back in a minute 35. You can see a bit of unspent gold there in the mid lane, so want to make sure Tockets can get his shop in before that next Dragon does roll around. But kind of popping down there for Trist, I see quite the item there in Macau's inventory. He is a fairly fast quick silver sash. Maybe he's been looking over to those Japanese scene VODs. Sin, the QSS rushes the couple but the swap is negated by the QSS we just speak of. But I mean, Utapon, of course, famous for Blade the Ruin King into QSS. We mentioned that on the likes of Callista. In this game, there's so many different CCs for Tristana to respect that with that rapid fire, you just can't auto attack in a fight when you have to worry about four different types of CC. Hell, even the death mark when it comes to split pushing against the likes of Vladimir. It's probably a very smart pickup to go for that QSS. It's still fairly cheap. No, actually, a box down there as well. Empress Divide going to push them out. Joxta, though, taking too much damage. Bonson gets credit for the kill, but Scion flanking around the top side as well. Bonson getting low. Massive damage coming in for Azir, but the Hemo play comes down on top of the Sedwani ult now as well. And Detonation focused me a great team fight. I mean, the big issue here is that Mikhail hasn't done any damage in this team, but was completely zoned and will just continue to be. They're trying to be damaged with the Dark Binding almost hitting in there as well. And Detonation Focus Me fighting back wonderfully here in this game. Might even push him for some turret damage. It was just a really poor use of the teleport into the unstoppable onslaught coming through from the Scion. Teleported behind. We've already seen the likes of Hecarim really pull off those teleport flanking gauges. But the issue was that the, the Tristana wasn't in position. It was still walking to the team fight. Another member of the team died. I believe it was Tokas. Before Tristana even grouped, did so little damage in that fight. The communication certainly not on point between the Brazilian team. And again, it's we, we've seen their strong landing. They've certainly looked good with maybe the mid lane being the big one for uh, Detonation. Focus me as far as strong players go, but... Yeah, these team fights have been honestly all in uh, Detonation Focus Me's favor. They've they've team fought well, they've skirmished well, they've played very well around the AD carry, which I guess is no surprise. And if it continues in this vein, you have to think with the tanky team comp scaling up here for the Japanese side that they have a very good shot of another upset here. I can understand what you're saying, but I feel like look, the power spikes definitely are towards the earlier game outside of the Vladimir. In terms of their vision control, the vision control has been the big hole. Vision control and minion wave control has been the hallmarks of Inz's play in previous weeks and even in just their loss to the Chiefs. In this situation, there's been so few resources for Inz for Detonation Focus Me to pick up that they're behind in item timings to a team cop that will eventually outscale them. I mean, Ints can still have these scattered team fights where, I mean, despite the fact that they have item advantages, they're losing. So there's always the potential that you misfire, but you only misfire enough times as a late game team comp if you're not really punished. And there's always that potential that Detonation Focus Me takes a big objective like the Baron. I mean, starts to get on the dragon hunt, starts to push in some turrets, but their seed's not very strong. And you just feel like certain item timings, maybe the Phantom Dancer towards the last whistle will be hit on the Tristana, and they just have no way to really lock her down now that QSS has already been completed. And that QSS, you could see it in just the exchange before the pause, honestly, saved her life from the Urgot Ultimate pretty much as soon as it was bought. So a very, very good cost of vision purchase there from the Tristan. If Macau keeps going and it seems like the Snowball's pushing in that direction for in, Tristana could get out of control once again. It's been a while. I mean, Tristana's not quite that late game force, but she's still very similar. Has a little bit less range. So does a lot of damage. We're loading in once again, though. And it's, I feel like the game's still definitely theirs to win, unless Dead Nation can really start to arrest what has been such a strong vision stranglehold. They're backing at this point, even though there's three pink wards in a triangle around the four members. That might see Dragon here, but Ints look like they might want to fight. Revolta is backing, though, does complete the recall, so Dead Nation focus me straight onto the Dragon, and they will be able to get it, you have to think. The hook going to come through. They're going to try for a steal, but the smite comes through, and Japan claim their first Dragon. Yeah, even with all the ward coverage, still able to pick up the Dragon. Macau, crucially, hadn't come back from the store and in time to be able to compete for that objective. Get onto the ladder, suddenly 6% stats for the likes of Vladimir, especially very relevant. Did commit fully to this Spirit Visage build that I just, I can't get behind with the lack of damage. Maokai, Sejuani, and Morgana support all decent support acts, but all of them do magic damage. If you're going to go for a defensive option, 
go for a magic resist option, go for Abyssal Scepter, so at least those base values from the aforementioned three champions are increased. Going for the Spirit Visage, just super curious to me. I mean, it's just maybe overly defensive is the best way to characterize it, is inside getting aggressive as here. Can't really do that much damage to the Spirit Visage Vlad right now, but does have a Zonis completed now as well. So playmaking potential there, and you can see when the Squishy people are there, Azir does a good amount of damage, and Kazu forced to flash away Macau, getting aggressive in the middle there as well. Over to the flank, but Seros gets the first kill onto the support, and Jockster going down. Yeah, just can't even see Tristana. It was just grouped too far back. Felt like she was once again zoned from doing damage, despite having all her abilities and ultimate up. Inter coming through a choke. Good ulti there coming through. Seros now getting aggressed on Dodge. Pull just at the last second after throwing on Hemo Plague, but a great double kill there for Trist after the double knockup from Sion. Gonna get in for a reset as well. Doesn't quite finish off the next kill as Bonzen's forced to flash away, but a two for one win there for Ince. It's Sion was looking for a really optimistic critical strike there. Would have picked up the kill, then got the reset on the rocket jump. Doesn't get it this time, but you feel like that might be a preview for those late game team fights. They had no way to gap close onto Sion. Just use the QSS to cleanse away or QSS away. Way, the uh, the big Vladimir ultimate, the Hemo played. They're doing this all in true vision, though. Yeah, and Unipon still has his ultimate. Yeah, nice big ward there in the back. But Tokers maybe going to bait them in. A good ulti back. Gets swapped in there, but does not complete. Gets knocked up, and Macau gets himself another kill. Now Bonzen going to get hooked up there. The box down as well. Dark Binding going to come through for Kazuma almost. But Azir doing ridiculous damage. Going to look to slay the tree. Can't quite get it done, but Ince might, might yet get the Baron. Ince already returned to Baron a couple of seconds. It goes down to 2,000 health. Not really going to be a contest. Yeah, Astorore coming in. Maybe fancied himself for a steal, but couldn't get in range for the smite. And the Baron does indeed go over to the Brazilians. And as is fitting for Int, look at that minion wave pushing down the bottom. It was already crashing onto the inhibitor turret. Their minion wave control has been a highlight of their play, absolutely. But their team fighting and Tokas, we think of him more for maybe some of the pass passive play we saw in the earlier game, but the engage play coming through that is possible with the Emperor's Divide was massive in securing them enough pressure to pick up that Baron. Yeah, good stuff there, and kind of carrying their aggression from the early stages of the landing phase to now around the objectives as well. Did lose the Dragon, which is going to cut off a bit of that Snowball now as well, but do have the Baron and a very strong Tristana that now that Phantom Manta Infinity Edge pickaxe and the QSS are completed so look for Ince to move around some of these lanes and start to really siege some of these tier 2 turrets. And honestly, Macau has multiple options for his third item. You can understand him opting for the last wish because it's, it looks on paper like a very tanky lineup and certainly there's health that has been built up. There's not a lot of armor picked up just yet by detonation. Honestly, a vamp scepter into a bloodthirster probably is more damage and will help him navigate fights. Uh, Macau on the Tristana a little bit easier than the Last Whisper, but Last Whisper, not a bad purchase, and of course, a bit of as Kazu dies. Good catch there, taking out the Morgana in the top side. Astorore going to get hooked away. He will move in for the play. Tower getting low, will fall down as well. Sejuani already dead to Revolta, and that's two kills with a Baron buff. Ints are not stopping. Yeah, there's three tanky members that can already just completely ignore turret damage. If they register a pick, they're going to go in. Yeah, they are looking to maybe go in. Azir looking aggressive, and Jiang is so tanky at this stage of the game. Just zoning people off left, right, and center. Base will be broken in 30 and a half minutes and they're going to lose an inhibitor top side as well. Yeah, the turret damage from the Tristana is so high. That's the one thing that's new with the changes on explosive shot. You can just throw it onto a turret, build it up, it'll explode just like it's on a champion and just explode down turrets. It's one thing she used to do from very safe range with attack speed, but now it's all around her E ability. And that free hitting just insane there as well. You can see a good wave there in the bottom side going to be in Macau. will run down there to take it out. Dragon back in a minute 20 ints. Maybe going to look for that as you can see. There's a massive meaning wave looking in with so many caster creeps hanging out. Exactly. It's all caster creeps exclusively now that the turret has taken down the tank. They're going to deep it down. Another mini wave comes out. Probably not going to be enough damage for Last Whisper, but not going to be far away. No, and that dragon up soon in a minute, actually. So good timing now for Ince to go back, spend some of the gold, take that third dragon away, and then look to rotate between the mid and bottom side and keep pushing because they do have some Baron buff left. In fact, if I'm looking at that right, that's either almost running out or halfway through. And look, everybody has a bit of armor, but suddenly Tristana, three items and a QSS, now can really get an auto attack range. Doesn't have to respect any of the CCs with the QSS, or at least the first CC that comes away. 
Look for Mikado to really pop off in the last fight. That's a scary proposition given that she's already got a double kill and been the big... Uh, and, and her team's been the big benefactor of her pushing advantage when they broke that top lane inhibitor. Yeah, 5 1 and 3 already for the Tristana. And just to inform me that Baron Ruff was, in fact, running out as Kazu might look to face check here. As the Rory here as well. Saros also looking, but there's a hook on a Sedwani. Good off from Revolta, but it's flashed away there from the rest of oh. Detonation Focus Me. Kazu, though, gonna go down as Macau's now on a rampage. And this Tristana, the train is not stopping. That's the first pick. Some of the minion waves, they're not quite pushed up to start sieging, but they're definitely getting there. Tristana bringing up a wave in the bottom lane to push in. Azir pushing in mid. All the global pressure pushing towards detonation focus. Yeah, and even without the Baron buff, without dropping away, they're still able to apply plenty of pressure around the map here. They've already got the top in here down. They're working on the other two now as well. And detonation focus me. They're running out of structures to defend. Absolutely. And our Brazilian representatives in are really applying the full court press. That's the way I really looked at this game. They spent so much time camped in the enemy jungle. I, if I could track just how many Raptor camps, how many golems Detonation Focus Me actually picked up, it'd be really minimal. Macau, though. He gets out of the way. The binding with a rocket jump there, but it looks like Yang dive deep into the enemy team now as well. Him and Blake does go down. Does hit onto Macau, but he's going to Q assess it away. Sarah's going to be the next target. He's forced to pull now as well. And Macau getting low, but everyone else is flashing away. It's a very weird fight on two fronts. As Tocca's going to get low there. Pops is on. He's forced to flash, but down the bottom still. Macau pushing in. Yang tanking up the turret, and the break the bottom side as well. And Macau crucially had to QSS a non-CC effect against a Morgana Sejuani Maokai lineup, Urgot notwithstanding, because she doesn't have any lifesteal. She has to respect the damage coming through from the Hemo Plague, so has to use that QSS preemptively. That's not going to be the case for much longer. They'll pick up the Dragon and then she'll be able to go back, get at least a Vampiric Scepter with the Tristana. Suddenly, able to hold that QSS more judiciously. I expect the time to go off massively in the next fight. Yeah, Dragon does go down, so that's the third coming do for Ince. I have to think it probably should have been the fourth here, but at this stage of the game, probably doesn't matter too much. Baron, back in a minute 40, so much pressure being applied to lanes from pretty much all fronts here. And Ince, this is sort of more of what we expected here. Couldn't do it in their last encounter with the Chiefs today, but had a great showing as far as objective and side wave control goes. This, when their game plan gets going, a much more streamlined version, and the reason why so many teams are scared to play them. And you can see that the CS advantages, they're both reflective of mechanical advantages, but also just the game plan of the events, pushing out all the lanes, causing all the map pressure. Every lane winning in CS, 50 CS, uh, 50 CS in top and mid in the 80 carry world, about 60, all about the same. Honestly, all three carries super ahead of their lane opponents. Mikhail's going to go bring up another minion wave. Of course they've got a minion wave pushing in top because it's still a super minion wave. There's just been so little time for detonation. Just pick up the, what they've got and just pick up some resources and farm. Reset from what has been relentless pressure from the Brazilian team. Yeah, it's not letting up here. 12,000 gold and counting now the lead for Instant. They're not closing out this game in any quiet fashion. Getting so aggressive here. Revolta's got about 4,000 health on the Gragas. Sion is ridiculously tanky as well, sitting about 3,500. This inhibitor, he's going to get defended admirably by detonation. Focus me, but it will just not last here. And Seros, Quite last either, it's just done started attacking him. Well, the Sand Soldier set up, but this could be the fight. I'm going to go in potentially. Sand Soldier's going to move out of the way. Bonson diving into the back there, but Revolta going to peel off. There's the ulti coming through onto Tokka there, but Urgo, but the first kill comes through from Macau. Double kill there coming through as well. Unipongo might be jumped in. There's a triple for the Triss. Maybe make it a quadra. Did she get it? Does get it, but Azir took the other one. Pent it and I, but that might be game. Still a massive quadra kill. 10 1 and 4 is no slouch of a, of a score line. The inhibitor respawns in top, but it's not even a footnote on this game and it's they roll over Dead Nation Focus Me and get that first victory. Yeah, they so crazy. They got their win 1-1 on the day here. Dead Nation Focus Me. No victories yet today, unfortunately. 0-2 for the record, but a strong performance there from the Brazilians. And I have to say, that sort of very clean play, they, they ended that game 